Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 27 October 2022. It's Thursday night, 9 o'clock. Must be time for a knife sale on the Apostle P channel. And it is. It is the last knife sale before Halloween. So I'm not going to make any puns. I probably did that in the title. Anyhow, let's get to it, shall we? First up, I need you to be familiar with and agreeable to the terms of the sale. I'm going to post them on the screen for you in just a moment. I'm also going to reprint them in the description underneath this video. If you are new to this weekly sales event, especially then, I really need you to be familiar with those. In fact, it's so important that I made a whole video about the terms of the sale. It's the first of three links you're going to see in the description at the very top. It's called a primer for buyers. That would be a good idea to watch that before you uh, dive in to the purchasing frenzy. It explains everything about how the sale works and why. The second link in the description will be to my FAQs for consigners video. That is pertinent to you if you would like to use this weekly sales event to move along some of your collection. That video explains how it all works from the consigner's perspective. And then the third video linked in the description is to my rates and services video for the Apostle P Knife Service, the original precision sharpening service for the online knife community. Now in the description, the all important description, the top section is the links, the middle section is the terms, the bottom section, the list of tonight's inventory complete with timestamps and pricing. Timestamps are on the left, pricing on the right. In that pricing column, you'll generally see two numbers. The first is the price of the knife, as shown in the video. The price on the right, as sharpened by the Apostle P Knife Service. There will be slots this week for just three knives to be sharpened next day. So the first three knives purchased in tonight's sale to be sharpened will be done tomorrow the 28th and shipped with all the as shown inventory. If you fall outside that first three, expect your knife to ship in three weeks, maybe a little quicker than that. I believe that's about it for housekeeping, guys. Time to get the terms of the sale up on the screen for you, and then we'll be right back with the sale inventory. Here are the terms. All right, let's get to it, shall we? We have no leftovers from last week, at least not at the beginning of the sale. I do have one, but it's later. It'll make sense. So first up, we are going to jump right into the thick of it. And I have stuff falling on the floor already. I do, I do. The thick of it, what do I mean by that? I mean, it's time for some how about the truth. <laughs> some great eastern cutlery offerings from how about the truth first up we will just start with steve's card the tidyut beer scout in tortoiseshell acrylic with button model 153215cl the cl stands for cap lifter one of 114 pieces all unserialized this was the premier run for the beer scout but because number 15 knives with cap lifter and screwdriver secondaries premiered a year before in 2014, no Beer Scouts got the Triple P, Patty's Potato Peeler, etch, for this premier run. I have several of these from this premier run in various handle choices, and it's the only reason I'm selling this gem. 400 or more, Steve says. Uh -huh. Well, we're going to do a little more. So you want to see the knife, guys? I dropped it again. Here it is in all its glory. 
the number 15 boys knife essentially with bail the special beer scout knife shield nickel silver bolsters brass liners gorgeous gorgeous tortoise shell main sheep's foot with the BS etch looks like Steve's got some very 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 fine hairlines going horizontally just from wiping mm -hmm. perfect walk and talk secondary implement is that screwdriver cap lifter we will say that walk and talk is a seven we'll say the walk and talk is perfect and the implements are both perfectly centered near mint and tube with button <clears throat> I will mention this guys Steve lives in Florida the button has a little rust and here's the tube okay so I found zero sold listings for this knife on eBay they are getting scarce there is one currently listed and I don't think it was in tortoise shell but it's a 595 buy it now this one can be yours from the personal collection of how about the truth 425 like it is 440 if you'd like me to sharpen the main blade <clears throat> next up another one from how about the truth his personal collection this one is from titty cutlery and it is for the oregon knife collectors club and you guys will recognize it brazilian cherry wood jigged with the beaver shield you guys are aware of this series of knives model 383215 that is not a grinling whittler it is a farmer jack uh-huh i'm gonna read you the card it's the farmer's jack with sheep's foot slash hawkbill mane it's a it's not a sheep foot it's a hawk bill and a budding secondary blade so the the main blade would be known as a pruner and then a budding secondary which looks a lot like a spay it's the beaver tail and jig brazilian cherry to trim one of 73 pieces all unserialized there is no blade rub the 38 grinling whittler farmer's jack and northwoods willamette half whittler are all sought after gems the jigged Brazilian cherry wood looks so much better on this frame than any other platform. I have another one in my EDC pile. Love it. You really have to have it in hand to truly appreciate the wood on this knife. Mm -hmm. Want to see it, guys? I know you do. I know you do. Oh, yeah. Let's hold it beaver right side up. Man, that is beautiful. <laughs> That's some of the best brazilian jig cherry i've ever seen on a gec knife so yeah here's your implements there is your pruner with the beaver tail etch both blades on cam tangs i will call that a six and a half pull stunning walk and talk for a gec cam tang and here is your budding knife very similar to a spay in profile that one walks and talks as well condition on this knife we're going to call near mint in tube uh, both blades are well centered by the way and zero rub as steve mentioned we're going to do on this one 375 like it is 405 if you would like it with an apostle p edge that's in your inventory as gec titty at number 38 beaver tail farmer jack next up oh it's another beauty uh -huh. steve was pretty brief on this one uh -huh. it is a number 47 viper northfield model 470116 in snake wood unserialized one of 126 pieces 
This is one of the better examples of snake wood for this particular run. And those of you who follow Great Eastern Cutlery and especially their utilization of snake wood, you know that it can be really, really beautiful or it can be kind of blah. This is beautiful. Here is the tube, by the way, and your tube label. And here is your Viper. Oh, 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 oh. Northfield trim 1095 blade, triple line bolsters, lanyard tube and brass, cloud shield. I mean, that's some beautiful snake wood. Polished cut swedge Warncliffe blade, the old unexcelled snake wood etched. Can you guys see that? Uh huh. Seven and a half on that pole, guys. That is a man's pull. Walk and talk is stunning. Centering pretty much dead down the middle. Condition on this one, I'm going to call like new in the tube. Mm -hmm. So let's see. <laughs> there is, I found zero sold listings for this knife in Snakewood on eBay. I found one current listing. And it's at 450 or best offer. And it has a crack in the wood near the lanyard tube stated in the listing. Uh, how about this one? Beautiful snake wood, no cracks. 395 like it is, 415. I sharpen that blade. That is in your inventory as GEC Northfield number 47 Viper Snake Wood. That's all important, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. Next up, I have a Great Eastern Cutlery number 47 Viper, but it's not a Northfield and it's not Snake Wood. It is a Titty Ute and it is Brown Snake Skin. That is an acrylic product. <clears throat> Here is Steve's card. It is the Viper Titty Ute Trim. Model 470116 in brown snake skin acrylic, one of 90 pieces, and a hot dog shield. Unless you've just landed from another planet, you should know this is one of the most sought after Vipers. Perhaps one other pattern had these handles, and I could be wrong about that. Try finding this one. Very rare. Mm -hmm. So that's your card. You've seen the tube. Just wait till you see this guys are you kidding me are you kidding me look at the chatoyancy in that acrylic how's that that's just stunning uh -huh. seven maybe a seven and a half pole TIW stamp from 2016, which 2016s can be either the TIW for Titusville Ironworks or CAR for carbon or the just the word carbon. Bill did that when he installed the CNC grinders. And then out of deference to an eatery that opened in Titusville called the Titusville Ironworks, which is an old company in Titusville with their name borrowed. Bill didn't want to step on their toes. Pretty cool of them. So, yeah. Uh, walk and talk is beautiful. Centering is beautiful. Seven, seven and a half pole. Uh, very near mint to like new in tube. Let's do 425 on this one, guys. Unobtainium. Can't find it. 425 like it is. 445 with my edge. That's the GEC Titty number 47 Viper Snake Skin. Next up. Oh. You got any big knife guys out there? Big multi-blade guys? You're going to like this one. It is a Northfield <clears throat> model 538311 in Snakewood. In snake wood. Here is Steve's card. It's the Northfield Cigar Stockman in Snakewood. 
It comes with the COA. Model 538311, one of only 25 pieces, all serialized. This is number eight of 25. No others were made with snake wood, and it also sports a muskrat clip main. All blades have near sunken joints. I'll show you what that means. This is the only time this knife was made with this blade set. Extremely rare for a scheduled run. See the rear label? That explains why the snake wood from Suriname, South America, is some of the rarest, most expensive wood in the world. Try finding this gem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just try. Let's see. Oh, here is the Certificate of Authenticity, May 20, March 28, 2011. Let me put the tube back and show you guys the knife. Oh my, oh my. Are you kidding me? Look at that. So you've got slanted, lined, and pinched bolsters, a cloud shield, your number eight of 25, engraved in the bolster. Pretty nice snake wood on this one. Not quite as stunning as that Viper we saw, but pretty nice. And you're going to have all cam tanks. <clears throat> About a seven and a half pull on that main muskrat. Your unexcelled snake wood etch. Beautiful. Center blade is going to be a sheep's foot. All pulls are about seven and a half. Then a spay on the back side. Perfect walk and talk. Standard rub on a three blade stockman. <coughs> we'll call it near mint end tube with COA. Unobtainium. <coughs> Can't find one anywhere. But you found one here. Let's do 350. Like it is, 390, I sharpen all three blades. That's the GEC Northfield number 53 Cigar Stockman. And that'll do it for how about the Truth GECs. Oh, but we got lots left. <clears throat> Next up, from Kershaw, and this is going to come not in a Kershaw box, but in a Winchester pouch. <clears throat> yep. This is the Kershaw 1725 Junkyard Dog. It is a first production knife galleon design. Very interesting clip, and that's going to go right hand tip down only. The handle on this Ken Onion design, that's not either. It's a galleon design knife. See, it says right there. <clears throat> Anyhow. Gray aircraft themed milled G10 handle. It is a flipper on washers with no speed safe. A flipper on washers with no speed safe. How about that? It flips. It locks. Rock solid. And it closes almost perfectly centered. In fact, you could probably free up that pivot a little bit and make it perfect. Uh, <clears throat> so you got a four and seven eighths inch closed length or handle length. You got three and five eighths inches of kind of, uh, I don't know, sort of spear pointy bead blasted blade steel. First production, one of 500 from February of 2007. <clears throat> I think these were Sandvik 13 C26, but I could be wrong. Got a, some very light spotting in the blade. That bead blast will do that, even in a not-so-wet environment. Overall condition, pretty doggone good. I'm going to call it excellent, just because of the spotting and the some very light scratching on the clip. No box, Okay. These are all over the map, guys. They've been discontinued for a long time. And this is a first production run knife. Uh, but between $82 and $330 sold listings on eBay. <clears throat> I 
Let's do 85 bucks on this knife. 110 with my edge. Next day sharpening available if it's one of the first three. That's the Kershaw 1725 Junkyard Dog First Production. Next up, I have a an unbelievably iconic, classic, and beautiful knife missing its factory box. <clears throat> so this knife is going to come in a very nondescript CRKT box, although it is not a CRKT. What is it? <clears throat> that, my friends, is the Benchmade 806 SBK Axis Lock AFCK. <clears throat> so the origins of the AFCK are a little unclear. I'm not sure if Les Deasis designed the AFCK or if Ernest Emerson did. I do know that Sal was not pleased. I do know that. This is kind of the, I don't know, maybe the, the second, maybe third generation of the AFCK. A purpose-built soldier knife. Okay, Big, thin, lean, and long. Originally, it was a liner lock knife, much like an Emerson. Then, over the years, Benchmade transitioned to using the Axis Lock. It's still got the Emerson-style clip, and it is parkerized. And, guys, I want you to take a good look at that clip. It kind of looks like a World War II, 1911, that, you know, before they packed them away in mothballs 70 years ago, 80 years ago, 70 years ago, they stripped off the bluing and parkerized them and then they just got bronze over the years that's what that clip looks like that's a parkerized clip but it's turning bronze which is very cool uh, g10 is still like factory fresh whoops it is a pre-production model uh 859 of a thousand that appears to be dlc guys that does not look like bk1 but i could be wrong uh, your Axis Lock lockup is rock solid. Blade's not quite a free dropper, but it probably could be. That's probably on Nylatron, I believe, rather than Phosphor Bronze. D2 is your blade steel. 3 and 15 sixteenths is your blade length. 5 and 3 eighths is your handle length. Centering is dead. Lockup is perfect. Action is super nice. It is very near mint, no box. Uh, these knives in various states of condition <clears throat> sold listings on eBay doing between 360 and 700. That's not even taken into account the pre-production status of this knife. And I don't think you're going to find a nicer one. I really don't. Granted, no box, but we're going to do on this one lower than the lowest sold price I saw on eBay. We're going to do 325 like it is, 345 if you like my edge on it. That is the Benchmade 806 SBK AFCK Axis. Next up, I've got another container that does not go with the knife. So you get this very interesting sort of zip top nylon padded pouch. Inside it comes, oh, just a Hinderer, just a Hinderer XM24 with the OD Green G10 scale, the stonewashed frame, the bright hardware, and the stonewashed Spanto blade in S35VN. A 3 and 15 sixteenths inches of blade. Five and three eighths inches a handle. It is a titanium frame lock with no steel insert and nylon washers. It drops free. It flips well with no wrist. Does have a weakish detent, which would have been kind of standard for this generation, but it flips just fine if you know how to flip a hinder. Uh -huh. Condition, I'm going to call very near mint like zero edge wear don't have a box with this one though uh, trust me it's a real one <clears throat> i've handled them enough super, super nice example 
let's do on this one 425 like it is 450 if you like my edge on it and next day sharpening is available if you're one of the first three that's the hinderer xm24 <clears throat> next up i have another <clears throat> flip tap padded nylon belt pouch but probably this knife didn't come in this one <clears throat> is from Crusader Forge and everything on this knife is huge I mean look at the hardware uh, how about the length five and three quarters inches closed mm -hmm. I've got a beautifully milled piece of what would you call that flat dark earth G10 coyote brown something like that and then a bronze anno bead blasted titanium frame milled titanium clip with just a couple little nicks on the corners and then i got a huge thumb stud <clears throat> that fires out this monstrosity of a spear point hollow saber ground s30v four and eighth inches long i don't know what that coating is but it's cool it could be a Cerakote. It could be a multicolored DLC. Anyway, it's just gorgeous. Gorgeous. <clears throat> the Crusader Forge FIFP. Fear is for prey. Mm -hmm. A rock solid lockup. Deep, secure, perfect lockup. No stick. Centering is really, really nice. Uh, the grind's not symmetrical, but the center of the blade is in the center of the blade well. Anyhow, uh, I'm going to call this near mint, no box. Really, the only mark on the knife seems to be on the clip. So Let's see. I didn't write down my pricing research, but I think these knives are like in the low to mid fives brand new. They're all out of stock now. Your price on this one, let's do $350 like it is, $375 with my edge on it. Near mint, no box, but with that nylon pouch. This is the Crusader Forge FIFP. $350 like it is, $375 with my edge. Next up. Another knife that I don't think comes with its original packaging because we just have this nondescript Velcro nylon pouch. <clears throat> the knife, much more special than the pouch. This is the Bob Terzola Custom ATCF folder. And this one is a pointed like I have never seen before. <clears throat> the bolsters are bronzed. Titanium, that's how they're referred to in the copy I saw. Bronzed titanium. Scales are natural canvas micarta. The clip appears to be titanium. Let's see if it is. It is. Spring flat stock formed titanium clip with the Terzola etch. The profile looks familiar. I know it does. You've got a thumb disc to open that works just fine. You've got a Sabre hollow ground blade in CPM 154CM. <clears throat> there is your Terzola maker's mark. Numquam Segundum. Mm -hmm. Look it up. <laughs> thumb disc. Jimp thumb ramp, super sharp jimping. Blade length is uh, 3 and 9 sixteenths. Handle is 4 and 7 sixteenths. Phosphor brown washers. Beautiful deployment. Silky smooth action. There is your lock engagement. It is a stainless steel frame lock with titanium bolsters. Rock solid lock up. Perfect blade centering. A very near mint. No box. I could not find even an old retail listing for this knife appointed like this. I can tell you this. It would have been in the mid fives. 
given similarly finished models like this I've found. Uh, Blade HQ listings. So it would have been a mid fives knife. Your price is going to be three seventy five, like it is three ninety five with my edge on it. Next day sharpening is available if it's one of the first three. The Bob Terzula Custom ATCF folder. Next up, guys, I cannot remember the last time I saw one of these. And it will not come in an original poly bag. It's going to come in this nice green Velcro knife pouch. This is from Strider, my friends. And it ain't an SNG. That is an SMF. That G10 looks pretty minty. That stonewashed frame looks pretty minty. Just a little tiny scratch at the high point of that clip. And that's it on a Strider. This, I believe, according to my uh, consigner, is a first run SMF and S30V. 3 and 7 eighths blade, 5 and 1 eighth handle. Titanium frame lock, not carburized, and no steel insert. No real stick. Nothing offensive. It has been sharpieized, as most riders have. Near free dropping action. Blade centering is like right down the middle. Are you kidding me? On an old SMF, you betcha. Uh, I really don't even detect any edge wear. I don't think this has been out of the safe much, guys, in its lifetime. There's a little bit of stick there, but it's really not. Nothing ever problematic. <clears throat> really nice example. I think I saw some key spots. Yeah. Oh, those might actually just clean off Little pepper spots, you can feel them a little bit, but I don't think they're even, I don't think that's just congealed lubricant or preservative. I don't think those are even in there. So yeah, very near mint, no box. <clears throat> Your price, 375 like it is, 400 with my edge. Strider, SMF. Next up, here's an interesting little knife. No box, just a uh, felt pouch for this one. Uh, a Shane Sibbert design from Benchmade. It's the 755 MPR Mini Pocket Rocket. First production run. So this knife actually went through some changes in its life. Most notable was going away from that right hand tip down milled titanium clip. They went to a stamped clip afterward. This apparently was a didn't get along with the pocket very well. So yeah, but nice little lines to get out of your pocket. And anyway, what we've got is essentially a titanium frame lock with a scale, right? So all G10 on the show side, and then a titanium frame lock with a G10 scale on the business side, right? Mini is short, 2 and 15 16 inch blade in M390 with a fuller and a swedge. Handle like this four and eight. Now, it does have the Benchmade mono lock system. So the stop pin nestled there is faceted, each facet a different distance from the center. So what that does is it changes the point at which the blade can lock up in that vertical dimension which changes how far the lock bar can engage. <clears throat> they usually like to be set up early because of the radius blade tang. This one is set up kind of late and it's kind of weak. Just so you know. If I were going to buy this knife, I would pay me to sharpen it and tune it. Because what it needs is it needs the lock bar tension increased and it probably needs the stop pin to be adjusted to allow the blade to lock up shorter earlier um, so yeah number 240 of a thousand in first production <clears throat> uh, they're discontinued they're out of stock 
I'll call this one excellent, no box with tuning issues noted, right? Uh, sold listings on eBay for these knives. Nice ones are doing like mid to high two. Some of them ticking up to 300. I'm going to price this below anything I saw sold on eBay just because it needs a little work. So it's going to be 150 like it is. 185, I will sharpen it, give it my spot treatment, and tune the lock so it doesn't have that vertical play. You can see it slipping back. Yeah. Action and centering pretty doggone nice, though, I gotta say. <clears throat> so there you go, 150 like it is, 185 with my Edge Benchmade 755 MPR, first production. Next up, from Microtech and my consigner, I hope you're watching. You're going to want to shoot yourself in the head because this is a Microtech. It is not an LUDT. So that means you've got an LUDT probably with a box for a, a UTX-85 sitting on your shelf. So we are selling a UTX-85 in the wrong box. It is a UTX-85DE for double edge. M390 blade, 2 and 15 sixteenths inches in length. Double-edged dagger profile. They do such a pretty edge on their double-edged blades. This one was born, what does that say? June of 2020. DLC blade, black hard anodized aluminum handle. I'm going to call the button effort medium firm. It's not fatiguing to my thumb. I could do that all night. Reliability, 100%. Haven't been able to make it misfire. <clears throat> Condition, like new wrong box. Um, these are out of stock everywhere. The last run sold out with a web retail price of $278 in this configuration. We're going to run this one. Even You can't even buy a new one. This is like new. And we're going to sell it for well under web retail. 230 guys. 230 like it is. Don't sharpen a double-edged dagger. It's not a slicer. It's a piercer. And they look so pretty. From the factory. That's the Microtech UTX85DE. Next up, we got another Microtech in the right box. Mm-hmm. It is a Microtech Combat Truodon double-edged dagger with bronzed apocalyptic finish. Oh my. There it is, boys. Five and one quarter inches of nastiness. Apop apocalyptic bronze hardware, black handle. Uh -huh. This one has a firm button. Yeah. There you go. Oh, so nasty. This one born, what does that say, September of 2021? Three and three quarters of blade, five and a quarter inches of handle. <clears throat> Firm button, 100% reliable. That one will wear you out as you drive your wife crazy as you're watching the movie. It will wear you out. It is like new in the box. These are out of stock. Oh, Blade Steel's M390, if I didn't tell you. Does it say that? Yeah, right there. Uh, this would have been web retail if they were available. 545. This one can be yours, like new, inbox, all in, ship priority mail, 480, no need to sharpen. That is the Microtech Combat Truodon DE. Next up, we got something just a little bit special. <clears throat> it's from Rockstead. Comes in with the cardboard sleeve, wooden box. Mm -hmm. Comes with a little bit of documentation. <clears throat> Let's just 
just open it up. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Well, there's a picture of the knife. It is a Higo 2 titanium handle in ZDP 189 at 66.6 .6 Rockwell. <clears throat> the clip 420J2. Let's take a look at the knife. Oh, my lord. <clears throat> that is a DLC coated handle, but it's not over a blasted titanium, it's over a fine satin, almost polished titanium. Beautiful mill pattern. <clears throat> the clip appears to be a PVD coating of some type made in Japan. It says <clears throat> there are some scuffs on the clip, not through the coating, but they are there. Then you got this. So you've got the <clears throat> blasted flats and the polished convex saber grind that is a zero convex. This appears to have been stropped. No nicks in the edge, really. Some very fine hairlines from use and stropping. There's, most of them are just stropping hairlines. There's one little scratch right by my thumbnail. Let's see if I can get that to glint. There it is. <clears throat> so it has been used, but lovingly, right? Three and a half inch blade, four and seven eighths handle, titanium frame lock. With steel insert at the lock interface. Beautiful lock up. I mean, just gorgeous. Rock solid. It's on phosphor bronze, but they're big, large, smooth, flat phosphor bronze washers. Look at that. Awesome. Lock up is rock solid, even with that action. Beautiful blade centering. Just a fine, fine, fine piece. <clears throat> I'm going to call it excellent in box. Might be closer to near mint. Price of these brand new, and I think I did actually find them in stock. $12.50 at your favorite web retailer. This can be yours for $8.95. No need to sharpen. That's the Rockstead Higo 2. Next up, I've got a custom offering. <clears throat> from Jason Guthrie. The knife comes in what appears to be a sunglasses case. Probably not the original box. But I do have this original <clears throat> certificate of authenticity signed by Jason Guthrie, product of South Africa. It is the Rover in marbled carbon fiber with an M390 blade made for January 2019. Number 19. Want to see the knife? I bet you do. <clears throat> it's a cute little thing. So on the show side, we have a three-hole, 3D machine, beautifully crowned and finished, carbon fiber scale. Looks like proprietary hardware. Uh -huh. And then on the clip side, I've got... <clears throat> A stamped spring titanium clip on standoffs with a very cool little mill pattern that contrasts the Anno, the Jason Guthrie signature in the clip. Just some very light rubs on the clip. <clears throat> it's a titanium liner lock and that liner is going to be anodized blue like the clip and like the titanium thumb stud. The blade is almost a razel kind of a blade in a hand rubbed satin. The front edge, that's not an edge. Okay, <clears throat> like a razel would be. Blade steel on this one is M390. The blade length is 2 and 15 or 2 and 5 16 Handle length is 3 and a half. 
Lock up is rock solid. There is your engagement. Action is smooth, but not particularly free. Satisfying, though. It's not a knife you're going to want to fling open. Blade centering should be squared away. And it is. <clears throat> and I, my seller mentioned there was a little bit of edge wear. Yeah, oh, yeah, some pretty good micro chipping right in this area of the edge. <clears throat> this knife was purchased new from the maker by my consigner for twelve hundred bucks. We're gonna do eight fifty like it is, eight seventy with my edge on it. Next day sharpening is available if it's one of the first three tonight. That's the Jason Guthrie Rover. <clears throat> Next up, I teased you about this one yesterday, guys. <clears throat> This is from Ferrum Forge, and this isn't a pro series. It's not a mass drop. This is an OG Ferrum Forge made in 2016 by Ferrum Forge. It's an Archbishop 1.0 that doesn't even have to say 1.0 because there was no 2.0 or 3.0. Very cool knife. <clears throat> we have what appears to be a glass bead blasted <clears throat> titanium handle that is DLC coated. Your Ferrum Forge Maker's Mark. Milled titanium clip, a right hand tip up only. Mm -hmm. Notice <clears throat> at the end of the lock bar, we have the ends of two screws that hold the. Uh, steel lock face insert and over travel stop and then you have this screw which houses the HRD the Hoback rolling detent so you've got adjustability in your detent and it's a ball that rolls which makes the effect of the detent on the action of the blade much less just super nice so I got a firm lock bar tension without a lot of drag from that detent ball. It is a flipper and it flips beautifully on ball bearings. <clears throat> I'd say that detent is just right. Yep. Got to get past it to close it though. There you go. So we got a 20 CV blade three and a half inches in length. A handle four and a half. Like new in pouch. I really couldn't find any discernible wear on it. There's your lock engagement. It's rock solid. You saw the action. And the blade centering is perfect. <clears throat> so yeah, these are definitely out of stock. It's from 2016. It's the first run of 200 pieces, by the way. <clears throat> uh, I found one sold listing on eBay. It was listed at six seventy five with a best offer accepted. So who knows, six fifty ish probably. This one can be yours, like new in pouch, five twenty five. And I forgot to mention, it's got a polished edge, and I don't know if Ferrum Forge did that, but it's awfully nice, and it really doesn't need to be touched. So it's going to be five twenty five. No need to sharpen. That's the Ferrum Forge Archbishop one point oh custom. <clears throat> Next up, we have another one from Ferrum Forge in another black pouch. No dog tag with this one, though. So, <clears throat> this is the Allurus, and I believe this is a, an overseas made Ferrum Forge. 20 CV blade titanium handle. <clears throat> Here's the knife. Kind of an acid stone washed <clears throat> titanium handle. It is a titanium frame lock with steel insert. Notice the no HRD, no, no hoback rolling detent, so that indicates it's not an in-house made knife. Got a milled titanium pocket clip. I got a ball bearing flipper. Beautiful spear point blade, bead blasted blade. Blade steel on this one is on the other side. It is uh, 20 CV. Three and seven sixteenths inches of blade, four and a half inches of handle.
super sweet action rock solid lockup and a perfectly centered blade <clears throat> we'll call it near mint to like new in box these are actually in stock new right now at web retailers for 285 bucks this one can be yours for 220 like it is 245 with my edge on that 20 cv blade next day sharpening available if it's one of the first three it's the ferrum forge allurus <clears throat> next up i got another ferrum forge in a civivi pouch don't know how that happened but this would be one of the chinese made ferrum forge knives this is the stinger but it's the stinger the, the ti stinger the titanium stinger right so without scales but it does have this very beautiful unicopper shred carbon fiber inlay on the show side got that triangular ferrum forge pivot deep carry clip it's going to be right hand tip up only then i've got i'm sure a ball bearing flipper yes super sleek beautiful fuller got a couple little rubs <clears throat> the blade finish very slight There is your lock engagement. It's rock solid. Centering is squared away. Flipping action rocks. Nitro V blade, three and three sixteenths inches in length. Handle is four and three sixteenths. These are in stock new at various retailers for one ninety nine plus tax, or you can just buy this one. <clears throat> Near mint wrong pouch, 150 like it is. 170 with an Apostle P edge. That's the Ferrum Forge TI Stinger. Next up, I was happy to see this one roll in a few weeks ago. <clears throat> These things seem to be the hottest thing on the planet. You know that maker's mark. It's a Chavez, it's an Ultramar, and it is. A Street Rendencion Drop Point Full Titanium M390 Blade. <clears throat> Here she is, boys. Uh -huh. They seem blocky and overbuilt, but they have one thing that's very economical. That's the blade to handle ratio. <clears throat> and I like them because they have thumb studs and no flippers. They are on bearings. M390 Blade, look at that. It's like a tri-directional satin every surface has that satin going a different direction hollow ground in the main grind and then flat <clears throat> at the end it's almost like a Toronto <laughs> but at, at the edge it's just you know pure drop point and profile pretty cool steel inserted <clears throat> three o'clock titanium frame lock there's your engagement. It's rock solid. Free dropping ball bearing action. Beautiful blade centering. Perfect detent. Perfect. <clears throat> so yeah, you've got uh, four and an eighth inches of handle and three and a quarter inches of blade. So less than an inch different. Anytime you're under an inch difference in blade length and handle length, that's super economical it's because of how close the pivot is to the end of the knife just a brilliant design and if you cannot stand the mick jagger skull clip in the box we've got a plain jane milled titanium clip so yeah <clears throat> these are out of stock and unavailable brand new i believe these sold at 325 when they're in stock they're doing 335 and 350-ish sold listings on eBay. This one can be yours. Near mint to like new in box. 325 like it is. 350 with my edge. That's the Chavez Ultramar Street Rendencion Drop Point. Next up from Cold Steel. Back in the good old days when Trump was president and Lynn Thompson owned Cold Steel. Uh, we've got the holdout too, a full serrated. <clears throat> so we got a black G10 handle. 
We have a tip up ambidextrous tumble polished pocket clip. We've got a thumb stud actuated blade and uh, a CTS XHP full serrated and pristine by the way is that blade. looks like it's been carried a little but not really used <clears throat> some little scuffs on the clip uh, the lockup is rock solid and it is a super strong spring <clears throat> and a deep engagement I mean you got to depress that lock bar all the way to the handle centering is close depends on where it falls yeah. condition very near mint inbox <clears throat> these Lynn Thompson XHP holdouts gone gone never to be never to be seen again let's do a hundred bucks on this one no need to sharpen that's the cold steel holdout too next up from the little engine that could CRKT oh marketers of generally goofy inexpensive and questionable knives but not this one every now and then they give the boys in Maniago a call and say let's make an expensive CRKT <clears throat> and we did again this one designed by the legend Ken Onion it's the Motley <clears throat> the Onion Motley look at that handle You've got that fine lion steel milling in that titanium. You've got a random looking carbon fiber inlay on both sides of the knife. <clears throat> it's kind of cool too because the carbon fiber inlay serves as the over travel stop for the lock bar. Pretty almost like a bolster lock. I've got an ambidextrous <clears throat> deep carry pocket clip. Mounts in that sort of standoff. Mm -hmm. Big knife guys. Whoops, that was all me. I wasn't paying attention. A Sleipner steel blade. Very oniony. It's like Ken Onion meets SOG or something. It's very cool. Super cool. <clears throat> nice grinds by Lion Steel on this too. Blade length is three and seven eighths. Handle five and a quarter. It is a ball bearing flipper. Steel inserted titanium frame lock. There's your engagement. It's rock solid. Dropper shutter. Perfect centering. <clears throat> Sweet flipper. Condition. <clears throat> Near meant to like new in box. These are in stock new at your favorite web retailer for $4.25. Or just buy this one. $2.95. All in. Shipped. Priority mail. $3.25 with my edge. The CRKT Onion Motley. Next up, from Luminox. And we have a sister watch to this, what, about a month ago? And it sold, like, right now. <clears throat> this one, a little different colorway, though. It's the Luminox XS 3503L Quartz Navy Seals watch. And this one doesn't have the big box because <clears throat> it doesn't have an extra strap in it other accoutrement so just a plain Linux box and here's a watch the other one had that sort of a stealthy dark green dial this goes with the blue the white hands the red seconds hand everything super legible on this one <clears throat> Swiss Ronda quartz uh, it's not a tick hitter particularly just so you know Anyhow, we've got 43 millimeters in diameter, 51 lug to lug, 24 millimeter lug width. This does have the machined case back, the Carbonox case, <clears throat> 60 click, unidirectional bezel. Oh, thickness, guys, is going to be 13 without the rider tab so 13 to the crystal it's probably 14 with the rider tabs 
So let's get that back to zero. You've got on this watch 16 tritium vials, one for each hour, <clears throat> one for each hand. And then we've got a tritium vial pip at 12. I will say this, though. I've never seen one that you could even see in the dark. That's such a small vial. And we don't do tritium loom shots on videos because you can't really capture it on video. Tritium is at its best at 3 in the morning when your eyes have seen no light for a few hours. But then it glows like crazy. <clears throat> I'm going to call this one near mint in box. A little bit of evidence of wear on the strap, but the watch is pretty, un pretty much unmarked. They do have 200 meters of water resistance without a screw down crown because of Luminox's uh, gasketing system. So yeah, nice offering. Uh, near mint inbox. These do between like 215 and 250 on the web secondary. We're going to do this one at 190 shipped priority mail. That's the Luminox XS 3503L Quartz Navy Seals watch. Next up, we're, this is my only leftover, and it's my watch. Um, I can't believe it. I know we had video problems last week, but I really thought you guys would buy this. It's a Squale. It is <clears throat> a 1521, 50 Atmos. Comes in this faux leather watch roll. So the hang tags, the owner's manual, all the goodies are in the center pocket. Extra links for the factory mesh. which is not on the watch. And this is in the blue Opaco version, which is a matte blue dial. Whoops. Blue aluminum bezel insert. Oh. White hour and white hour hand and second hand, orange minute hand. <clears throat> Blasted 316L stainless steel case. <clears throat> screw down case back. Screw down crown at 4 o'clock. Beautiful 120 click unidirectional bezel action. It's nice. It's satisfying. This watch is wearing a Borealis <clears throat> Tropic style strap. Uh, I've got a little bit of mark in the bezel, but 11.30, it's pretty faint. Uh, and really, other than strap change marks, the watch is pretty much unmarked. Lots of AR coating on the underside of that glass sapphire, by the way. So, yeah, let's see. Dimensionally, 41 millimeter diameter, 48 lug to lug. 12 and a half thick, 20 millimeter lug width. Uh, let's see. Uh, right now, this watch is running about 10 seconds slow per day. It was pretty much dead on to plus five. I, th I think I might have mildly magnetized it. It seems to be coming out of it, though. It was running slower than that last week or two weeks ago when it ran, so, or last week. <clears throat> right now it's about I set this 13 hours ago and it's five seconds slow so not bad um, let's see we'll call it near mint in box with two straps we ran this last week at 650 nobody bought dropped it to 595 for the weekend still here uh, there will be no Saturday price drop on this one guys if nobody wants it for 550 I'll just keep it 550 is your price. Shipped priority mail. That's the Squale 1521 50 Atmos in blue Apaco. <clears throat> Next up. From my personal collection, a Benchmade 550-1 Griptilian. <clears throat> I still love this knife. I do, I do. Gray G10. Milled, checkered, and blasted to be beautiful. Blue liners, blue hard anodized aluminum standoffs. Oh, it's the left hand. I've got the clip on the left side. I can actually use it properly. 20 CV blade, first production run number 807 of 1000. 
it is wearing an Apostle P edge and it is a maintained Apostle P edge. So you'll notice that the micro bevel is a little prevalent because it's been touched up a few times. It's very sharp. Lockup is rock solid. Centering is mostly perfect. Most of the time it looks like that right down the middle. Occasionally it looks a little off. You know how Benchmades are. Action is just fine. Condition near mint in box with my edge. Let's do 145. No need to sharpen. Benchmade 550-1 grip. Next up, <clears throat> you know, this knife I'm selling just because I think one of you guys might want it. It's probably never a knife I was going to carry. <clears throat> I'm not sure how much I love it, but it does have some in interesting stuff going on that you guys might like just because you like this channel. So it is a buck, and it is a limited edition. <clears throat> and it has a certificate of authenticity. Number 65 of 500, it is the Loxa. To continue the legacy of the 110, this version represents a concept for a modern design of the folding hunter. The Loxa 110 is named after the company's current factory on Loxa Street in Post Falls, Idaho. <clears throat> One out of only 500, this version contains matte finished nickel silver bolsters, an S30V steel blade, Textured G10 inlays. It also utilizes a belt clip or pocket clip, maybe, and a thumb stud. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> longtime viewers will remember this knife. There you go. I have the clip mounted for left hand tip up carry. On both sides, you've got the buck. <laughs> anvil shield and sort of a bronze antique bronze finish there are your brushed nickel silver bolsters your g10 scales it looks to me like that's a one piece frame on each side it looks like the liner and bolster are one piece of material and then you've got thumb studs 65 of 500 boss s30v beautiful satin beautiful grinds this of course is wearing an apostle p edge and other apostle p stuff <clears throat> so let's see i did a little sharpening trial because i thought it needed it and then i thought you know the thumb studs just aren't very gettable this scallop is not here from the factory and you guys who saw my video oops no but I can't flick a knife open apparently it still takes quite a bit of rest but at least you can get to the thumb stud thumb goes right down in there and out she comes very hard to get without that I did that freehand with a Dremel tool and trust me, guys, it makes it a whole different knife. Then the other thing was, it had some spring and backspacer issues. It had blade wrap. And I had to actually get in there with a Dremel and then freehand polish with finer paper to get that backspacer to clear the belly of the knife, which it now does. So it needed a little work. It's got rock-solid lockup. It's got free action. And it's got beautiful blade centering. And it's got some loving care put into it. So I bought this knife from an eBay seller, brand new, for $195. And then I did a whole bunch of work. Hours and hours worth of work. Getting everything perfect and symmetrical. And I even said in that video that I showed this work, do not ask me to do this to your knife because I don't trust myself not to ruin it. So yeah. I paid $195 for it and you can buy it for $195 after all my personalization slash improvements. That is the Buck Loxa TAP Custom. 
And that brings us to the last knife in tonight's sale. It is from Great Eastern Colliery. <clears throat> Tidiute. It is a Lick Creek Tom's Choice Barlow. That's a lot going. That's a lot of themes going on there. I got Tom, Tom and Huck on the old Mississippi. I got Lyle back in Lick Creek, Lick Creek, West Virginia, with this little Barlow knife. <clears throat> Model 141118 <clears throat> in Gabon Ebony Wood. And we've got some wisdom from Charlie on the back. We got a Tom Sawyer, genuine Sawyer Barlow TC button. And then I got this beautiful little knife. Check it out. Gorgeous Gabon Ebony. Deep black, all steel construction. What are these? Three and a sixteenth inches close length. A stout seven pull on that little blade. 1095 steel. Gorgeous clip. Long pull. Cut swedge. Tom's choice etch. Wearing my edge on it. I sharpened it up. I strapped it. I might have carried it twice after I bought it. Very near met. Beautiful walk and talk. Perfect centering. <clears throat> Guys, the reason I'm selling this, I just uh, don't carry a 14. They're just too small for me. <clears throat> so somebody gets it. With my edge, 200 bucks, all in, shipped priority mail. It's the GEC Titty, number 14, Lit Creek Barlow, TAP. And that, guys, brings us to the end of another Thursday Night Knife Sale on the Apostle P channel. Please don't do anything too silly this weekend that might make it, like, dangerous, you know. No egging of houses, no, uh, no firecrackers planted under people's windows with cigarette fuses. No, uh, no toilet paper. No flaming bags of who, none, none of that. Be safe. Be kind to each other. That's all for this one. Grace to you and peace, my friends, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, the word is sharp. And now commence to clicking. Talk to you soon.